Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, so um, hi, my name is Sinisha. I'm from University of California in Riverside, and I'm going to tell you about this um, package. So this is a general purpose uh, type binding uh, code. It's meant to be used mostly to deal with um, like toy type binding models. And since uh, many of you are, some of you might not be familiar with object-oriented programming, let me just spend a minute on this. So this is a little code, you know, x is three, y is seven, and then z is x plus y, and you print z. Um, so this x is what I would call like a normal variable. It only knows about a single number. So this x knows that it's three, and the z knows it's 10. It doesn't know anything else about itself. And then there's this thing called an object, which has more information. So this is a layer of abstraction. So for example, this, this X is supposed to be a house. It presents a house somehow in a computer. And this house has certain information that's stored inside. So for example, this house happens to be red and has three rooms. And then if you ever need to like pull up any information about X, you say X dot color and you can print it. And you have these other things uh, that are called me methods. But so these are kind of actions you can do on object X. So you can take object X and change it in some way, for example, or do something. For example, I can add one room, and now my X dot rooms it has four rooms, depending on you know how this function was coded. Okay, so that's object-oriented programming. Um, and so let me tell you about um, the object that is used to represent the type binding uh, approximation. So this is a little code which specifies uh, a simple type binding model. And this X over here is now not just a number, but this X contains all of the information you need about this type binding model. Um, and so now the question is, which information do you have to store in this X? And so the first piece of information you need Oh, by the way, if there are any questions at any time, just uh, raise your hand or type something in chat and then Anton or somebody can tell me if there's a question. Um, so I'm trying to kind of rather go slow than fast. And then at the end, you know, I have a bunch of examples. But you can either, either you know, run on your own at home or do it at the end of the session. Uh, so I'd rather you know, be stopped and have to explain something in more detail. If needed. Okay, so the first piece of information you have to tell this type binding model is the dimensionality of the space you're working in. So for example, you might work in two dimensions and then your type binding model here, you have to specify that number two. And that means that you work um, in a plane. Uh, next thing you have to do is you have to specify these vectors. Maybe lattice vectors was not the most convenient way to call this, but these are vectors. Um, the first vector has an X component two and the Y component zero. And the second vector has the x component 0 and y component 1.5. And they're supposed to be listed here. So this is the first vector and this is the second. OK, then the third piece of information is you have to say, uh, where are your orbitals? So our wave function will kind of be chopped up into little pieces. And the piece that is uh, sitting over here, maybe it's like a dxy orbital on some atom. I will represent this with uh, this red blob over here. And the location of that orbital is 20% along the first vector and 10% along the second vector. So I'm using these uh, fractional reduced crystal coordinates. You know, they have many names. So th these are dimensionless numbers. And in Python, the first orbital it has index zero, which might be confusing. Um, and then the second orbital is 70% you know, located along the first vector. And 80% along the second vector, and here it's denoted in blue. And the second orbital has index one. Okay, and then the fourth piece of information you need is the periodicity. So um, you have to say, you know, we will specify everything in the unit cell, but then you have to say whether your model is periodic or not. So if you specify the periodicity to be two, that effectively means that whenever you tinker with something in the unit cell, you're effectively doing that in all of the unit cells. So if the periodicity is two, then this little unit cell is infinitely repeated in all directions. Okay, and then another way to specify this same thing is to say that 
periodic directions are zero and one, which means that the first lattice vector and the second vector are both periodic. And this gives you the same thing. Okay, but you can do this thing also. You can say that periodicity is one, so you have only one dimensional, um, you know, only one dimension is infinite. And here I specified that the periodic direction is zero. So this first lattice vector is periodic. And then if you do that, then you get this little time binding model, which kind of stretches in, uh, in one direction only. And then this, you might be wondering what is the purpose of this perpendicular vector? So this vector is no longer a lattice vector. It's not used as a way to kind of repeat the system. This vector is only used to specify the coordinates of these orbitals in the vertical direction. And that's why I put, you, put it here in gray. And then I also have this convention for R vectors. So the home cell uh, vectors, sorry, the home cell uh, has coordinates zero, zero. That means, you know, this is my center of my origin of my coordinate system. The unit cell on the right has coordinate one, zero, twice on the right is two, zero, and so on. So this R convention is also what we will be using. And Okay, so here again is the how you specify periodicity along the zero uh, vector, the horizontal one. And so, 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 so this is if the periodicity is along the horizontal vector, you get this model. If periodicity is along the, if, if you specify that periodicity is one, that means that the second vector, vertical one, is periodic. And then your unit cell, then your system effectively looks like this. So it's being repeated along the vertical axis. And now these, uh, 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 these unit cells have indices 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Okay, so up to now what we had is this, this five lines specified this infinite model uh, and I specified the orbitals, the locations, and the periodicities. Okay, so now we have to add the information about the Hamiltonian. So, you know, our wave function is kind of composed of these little pieces, you know, the red and blue, which are repeating. Um, but we have to have some kind of dynamics, right? So uh, some kind of information about uh, Hamiltonian for this system. And so the first thing you have to do is you have to specify the so-called on-site energy. Um, so for example, this line over here, this line over here says that uh, orbital uh, with index one, so that's the blue one, has the on-site energy of 3.5 in some units. And so this means that if you place an electron in this blue orbital, which is maybe you know, some PZ orbital or something, uh, and if that orbital is not coupled to anything else around it, so then the electron will stay there forever. And the energy of that electron would be this uh, 3.5 that you specified. Okay, and then once you specify the onset orbital in the home cell, to have 3.5 uh, energy, then effectively have specified that in all of the unit cells as well, because we always assume periodicity. So by this one line, you can specify all of them at once. Okay, but then in a solid, you know, if you put electron in one atom, it will not stay there forever. If, the, if this is like a perfectly localized state, um, something like the Vanier function. So in reality, this electron is going to kind of over time spill into neighboring atoms. Um, so, for example, if let's say that you somehow prepare experimentally the electron to be in the uh, to be in the blue orbital, and let's say that the electron uh, is 100% certain to be at this uh, point in uh, space at that time, and then let's say that after some short amount of time, the electron uh, moves to the red orbital, and it's only like 5% uh, over there. Now. Sorry, is there a question that I can answer? Or I heard something. Okay. Are there any other questions from the audience? No. Okay. So there was a, a question online, but we'll take it after. Okay. Or we can do it now. Uh, but that's the second. Question. Yes, it's possible to set dimensionality to zero. So that's a good question. So uh, uh, here I had all possibilities except one. So I could have specified a dimensionality to zero, and then I would have. Uh, only one orbital. So if I set here zero, then basically I only have uh, I'm modeling like a molecule of you know, 
uh, carbon uh, and oxygen or something, uh, no, carbon monoxide molecule or something. And there was another question, if the sites contain multi-orbital, how to define the on-site matrix there? Ah, good question, thank you. So, um, so this is how you specify on-site energy for orbital one. And then you can call this function, you know, next line, you can specify the onset energy for orbital zero or any other orbital. So you just call it one after the other. That's how you specify a more onset energies. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so this is where we were. We start to we, we somehow place the electron over here and you know, kind of put it into the STM or something. And then you see what happens uh, when the electron moves in time. And let's say that after some short time period, it has 5% chance of being over here. Uh, so this number 5%, you can parameterize with this hopping uh, matrix element. So the, this overlap between the, these two red and blue states uh, with the Hamiltonian, that thing squared is proportional to, that's going to tell you what's the probability of finding the electron nearby. And that's our, you know, uh, so-called hopping integral, and this is kind of the central quantity in the tight binding model that we have seen probably every day of this uh, summer school um, in various talks. Uh, of course, you can have hopping from any side i to j; it doesn't have to be e zero to one. Uh, and if your system is periodic, then your hoppings might happen between potentially between different unit cells. So you know the orbital j maybe is not in the home cell, but it's in some other unit cell r. Which might be like this one over here. Now, if you use periodicity, then you know that these hoppings kind of have to be translationally invariant. So that means that you are allowed to fix one of these vectors to be zero in the home cell. So it's enough to specify only hoppings from i in the home cell to any j in the any other cell. So you know how do we kind of parameterize these probabilities for electron to move around? Uh, so you have to specify these um, uh, hopping matrix elements. And you know, I will schematically denote this with this uh, green line over here. Uh, so this piece of code will say that I have a hopping, you know, I'm specifying that such a matrix element is actually non-zero, so that electron can jump from you know this orbital to that orbital in this cell. So that's this line over here is uh, shown here with this uh, green arrow over there. And so remember this convention because there will be a quiz. Uh, so the bra state is denoted with this index, the first index that appears. And the uh, ket state in the overlap is denoted both with this uh, J index of the orbital and the R index because R has to tell you which cell you are. Because remember again, we only need hoppings from I zero to JR. Any questions? There was a follow up question yep. on your previous one. Uh, Atansi asked, no, I'm saying if site one contains. Ah, okay. So if the, if, the, if the site contains multiple orbitals, then you have to add uh, 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 two orbitals on the same location, and then they just have different labels. So the zero or one is just one way function. If you have a D state, then you have to put five orbitals in the same uh, at the same location, and then they have indices zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, if you have the, the, the C, come here. The C is it in percent? Five percent? No, no. I mean, it's not five. I mean, this is an energy, so you know you have to multiply this with time, divide by h bar, and then you know that gives you the the part of the wave function that will be on the neighboring side. So you know, you just take e to the i h t. And you write it as one plus IHT. And then if you act on that in your initial state, then you see that this, this will dictate the probability for the electron to jump over in, in, in a small time interval. And because you have Taylor expand. Okay, so the red thing this defines the bra, and the blue thing defines the cat. Okay. Um, but then because again, because you have periodicity, you know, this one line specifies all of the hoppings at once. So you don't have to do them uh, repeatedly. And then also because your Hamiltonian is Hermitian, then as soon as you have a jumping from, hopping from I0 to JR, actually it's from JR to I0. But, uh, okay, so as, as soon as you have the matrix element between I0 and JR, that automatically specifies that matrix element between J and minus R 
is the same, and I0 is the same up to a complex conjugate. So specifying hopping in one direction gives you hopping in the other direction, even if you have a like broken time reversal or whatever, as long as you deal with a uh, you know, normal Hamiltonian, then that's what you get. Like, there's no decays or stuff. Okay, so basically up to now what we have is that these now like eight lines of code specified, you know, these onset energies and the hoppings that are listed over here. Any questions? Okay. So of course, I don't have to write all these in I and J, so Python kind of makes it easy. You can just uh, put zero, one and zero, zero. So again, this zero means the first orbital, the second orbital that you're jumping from actually is one and the zero, zero. And now there was a question, you know, how do you add more hoppings? So then you just add one more line. So for example, if I have a hopping from zero, to zero in the unit cell shifted by two. So that's from here to over here. Then I can specify that as well. Of course, this T can be different. And then, you know, once again, once you specify that, you specify all the combinations as well. Okay, so what will happen now is because I'm trying to do this tutorial in such a way that uh, things which are kind of annoying when you deal with this type binding models. I cover that here, and then you know you're running the code and getting all the bugs and you know making the plots. You can like you know look it up on our website, or you can do it at the end of the of this session, and I can you know uh, assist you if needed. So I'll try to kind of quiz you on this thing. So first thing that has to happen is that you guys should either go on this website or use your phone to uh, uh, scan this QR code, and um, uh, which will take you to the same website. And then I'll ask a question and you guys can answer. And uh, this will be anonymous, so you don't have to put the username. Um, and it's actually currently not active. Let me activate the question. Sorry. So uh, I'll show the question on the screen as well. So um, can you raise your hand if you have successfully? Okay, I'll have a little bit more. And if you're watching this on YouTube in like 15 years from now, then this link will not work, but your, uh, you'll still see the, see the question. Somebody who can't connect? Okay, I'll read the question. You, you don't have to read the question. I'll read the question for everybody, but okay. Good, okay, so let's give this a try. So this is the first question. Um, so the red circles over here are our are, are orbitals for some time binding model. Um, and then the numbers inside the circles represent indices of orbitals, you know, zero, one, two. And the uh, hopping terms are indicated with green arrows uh, as shown here. And for the following code shown over here, you don't have to focus on the gray part for now, but for the following code, which of the sketches, you know, A, B, C, D, or E, uh, corresponds to this code. Okay, I have like 19 people, 20, 21, 22. So please uh, think about this for a moment. I just want to make sure that this interface works. Okay. I don't know how many people you can expect. I have 35 at the moment. Six. Okay, I'll wait a little bit more for everybody to kind of log in. Uh, maybe we can show this again for a second if you have to scan the thing. Okay, 40. Okay, so 88% of you think C, so C is probably right. Uh, so let's see, C is a. Oops. So uh, C has a hoppings between zero and one and two and zero, which is the same as zero and two. So this is a molecule. Um, this is the zero dimensional. So, so C is correct. Uh, any questions? Yeah. So there's no need to specify the in cell hoppings? What do you mean by in cell? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I should have clarified. So just make sure this is a problem. 
So here I have four options. Either the model is the thing in the dash lines on its own, or the thing can be on its own or C or D. So this is not like one big model. So it's either A, B, C, or D, and this is a molecule. Oh, you're asking whether I have to specify zero, zero here? Uh, yeah, because the system is not really Yeah, so actually I think that uh, if you put anything else except uh, zero, zero here, I think the code would be correct. So in this case, very good question. So in this case, you don't, do not have to specify um, um, uh, R because we are working with the molecule. Okay, any other questions? Okay, how am I doing on time? So uh, let's try then the second one. So um, let me, okay, so 44 of you and pretty much everybody got it right. Okay, uh, let's try the next one. I will activate the question. So you should now see on your phone or laptop a different question. So this is the second question. So we have a, we have a one dimensional system where uh, we have this orbital zero and the whole things are as indicated. So this is a, a, a system that's periodic and infinite. And so a reminder again, you know, I have this E I J R. So I is in the home cell and J R is in the shifted cell. So again, you know, don't worry about the gray part for now. This just specifies where the orbitals are. So you have to figure out now which code corresponds to this model. Do I specify them? 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, and then you know, so on. Or 0, 0, 1, 0, or none of the offered answers is correct. None of the other okay answers. I think last time I had 44, now I have at this moment 30. I'll wait a little bit more. Okay, so 35. Okay, so please select what you think is the answer. So 36 people answer. Uh, B is, you know, 86% said B. Um, so B is correct. So basically, you know, I'm hoping from orbital zero to orbital zero in the neighboring cell. And that's all I have to say, right? Uh, I don't have to give anything else. Is that clear? Okay. So let's try the next question. So you should see now a new question on your screen. Uh, so now we have a two-dimensional model. And um, Hopings are as indicated, and we will specify A, B, or none of the other of their wrong. Oh, I didn't activate, sorry. So the question should now appear on your uh, device. Everybody's getting this right. That's good. Okay, so I have 30 people. I'll wait for a few more of you to answer. A bit of a distribution now. Okay, 35, 36. Okay, so. Like 76% think B, so uh, B is correct. So basically, um, um, I'm hoping from zero to zero in the cell on the right and from zero to zero in the cell above. Um, if you want to kind of think about this, you know, think about like what's the smallest. Sorry, is there a question? Or, okay, I thought I heard something. Okay. Um, ah, I could play. Ah, okay. Okay, so uh, if you have a want to visualize this, kind of think about the smallest repeating unit, but not only the orbital, but also the hopkins, and then think about how this thing repeats over. So, you know, if you take this thing and kind of copy paste it to the right, then no green arrows overlap the previous ones. And then, if you continue going in all directions, then you get what we wanted. So, everything's good. Uh, we were not double counting anything. So basically, only so the only so the first line specifies this hopping horizontally, and the second line 
is doing this hopping vertical, and that's all you need. Okay, so most of you got this correct. So let's then move to the next question. Uh, let me also update this. And uh, so let's try for one. I have a question. Yes. So what will happen if I? Try to set a A case uh, will give me an error or it will go in the slow wait, in, the, in this case? Yes. Yes, so very good. So um okay, very good question. Thank you for that. Um so if you specify a case, so you have zero 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 one, but that's duplicate as the third one, right? Zero 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 minus one. And in that case, the code will say you are trying to specify the same thing twice. And I'm stopping and not doing this. If you really want to do it, then you have to put some extra tag with a like long scare name, and then it will do it. Uh, and but then it will be double counted. And then also, if you ever specify hopping, you can if you specify again the same one, it will also you know if you do like zero 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 one, but then you call it again zero 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 one, then it will also stop, I think. But you can all override that. You can say like. Just replace the one I had before with a new one or add them together. Um, so, uh, in general, if the code does something that sounds suspicious, it will just stop. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it possible to construct a time binding model uh, by removing the mechanics? Yes, you can remove any mix. Yeah. So we can uh, make a uh, hoping uh, different from the price and the level. Oh, if you want to make a non hermitian Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, we didn't allow non hermitian because we want to kind of check for consistency with our matrix, you know, permission. It's not an easy, I mean, it's not, not a difficult thing to pack. You can go, you know, entire, entire package is one file, you can download the file and install it, change one line. So it will allow it to, to do it. It might fail some tests, but. Uh, currently, it doesn't allow uh, non hermit disk. Yeah. Something else? Yeah, does it mean anything? Because then your energy, well, I get money, will be complex. Yeah, but then I want to plot it, you know, then I have a special team for no, no, plotting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would mean that there's like some kind of no, GW, you know, like, it would mean that. Oh, it could mean that. It would mean it's a quasi, that the electron, you know, can scatter to other states. Oh. Yeah. Any other questions? Again, I prefer to go slower with this and faster. So, you know, um, especially with slides, you can go arbitrarily fast. So, let's try this question. So, um, so now I want to, I, I had that thing from before, but now I want to add also the orange hoppings exactly as drawn. So, uh, what do I do? Do I add, you know, this line, add that line, this line? You know, first two are the same from the, that we had before, or none of them are correct. I really have a split now. Yeah. Okay, I have 21 people. So, um, where's the home unit? So, let's not uh, give out the answer. I'll, I'll, let's first, everybody just thinks for themselves. So, like what, what you think, you know, this is anonymous, you know. No grades or anything. <laughs> so th then we'll have a discuss. We'll, I'll let you guys discuss. But let's first everyone just answers for what they think. Okay, I have thirty-five people. Okay, good. So the distribution is that about about half of you think A, and a little bit less than half and think think B. So we have a split between A and B. So now what's going to happen is you find somebody next to you with a different answer, and convince them they're wrong and you're right. So you guys either think A or B. So go around the room, meet people if you haven't met them before. If you're online, maybe I could do it in a break breakout session, but it might crash something. Uh, maybe you have somebody next to you you can talk to. You're free to walk around and talk to people. You don't have to sit in front of your computer. Bill compliment from one of the participants saying is just 
this was it's a very nice way to, okay. to introduce goals. Yeah, okay. Okay, if you're done discussing, you can go back to the same link and answer again. Otherwise, just continue discussing. Discussion. <laughs> so, um, again, you can go to the same link and you can vote again. Answer. Okay, I'll wait for a few more of you to select your answers again. Okay, so now we have 80% uh, think D and 12% think A. Uh, does somebody want to tell me why did you guess? Uh, so, why did you select either A or D? Somebody offered their. Um, Thoughts on this and like how do you can get to the conclusion for either A or D or maybe DC? Yeah. Uh, so I first thought about the that just I like, choose one cell and, and then make it to the right, but then we have the discussion that would imply that the next uh, left to it would supposed to also have the same position, which was apparently not true. So maybe then the simplest would be a, a, a two by two cell. <laughs> Before we go to the how, how to do it correctly, but so, so basically your, your point is that basically if this guy can jump to that guy, then by the list that was implicit here, it should also jump over here. Exactly. And then we are missing this. Yeah, and then your suggestion was to make a supercell. Exactly. Yeah, so you would make a two by two supercell, then these orbitals would be like zero, one, two, three. You would have to add all the green ones. Actually, there's a field for that. And then you would add this from here to here, from zero to three. Okay, good. Uh, any questions about this? Okay, so A, so A is not correct, B is correct. Okay, good. So let's go to the next one. So I, I said, you know, how to specify locations, but I didn't maybe spend too much time on how exactly you, um, you know, I said that, you know, these are fractional coordinates. So this is another thing that kind of causes headache. Um, so, um, uh, so let's say we have, uh, so, you know, now I'm not talking about whole things, I'm just talking about locations of orbitals. Uh, as I said before, the orbitals are given in uh, reduced or fractional or crystal. These are just the same name, different names for the same thing, uh, uh, coordinates. So for example, if I have 0 0.5, that would mean half of the first vector plus this much of the second vector, you know, one third of the vector or one zero. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, the first two are supposed to specify the location of the zeroth orbital, and then the next two are su supposed to give the location of the second orbital. And so, in this case, uh, with these allocations, um, what do you think, uh, what should I specify for my orbitals? Yeah, 27 people uh, answering. Uh, I'll wait a few more. 32, 34. Okay, so 97% of you think A, so A is correct. Uh, so basically, you know, 0, 0 would be here, and then 1, 1 is here. 
So if, the, if these numbers are the same, then you're on the diagonal, and then one third in is this guy, and two thirds is this guy. So that's why it's the A right there. Okay. Um, now let's try this this thing. <laughs> so now you have to specify for the same thing. So we first, you know, figured out where the orbitals are. Uh, now we have to get the hoppings between these orbitals. So this is, of course, uh, uh, graphene. So um, which ones of these is correct? Activated? Hmm? activated? Uh, it should be activated. Okay. So 21 of you have selected your answers. I'll wait for a few more of you to select what you think is the correct answer in this case. <laughs> Okay, so 38, so 76% of you think A. Um, somebody wants to comment about, well, okay, if the majority of you say A, okay, then I will discuss detail, but basically, yeah, so you, you go from zero to one in the same cell, that's this guy, and then you go from one to zero in the cell above, and then from one to zero to the cell to the right, and then everything else is just copy paste. Okay, so 76% of you guys right, so A is correct. Okay, so any questions about this before I talk about something else? What would the picture look like for the B? Um, so it, I, oh, let's let's try. So good. So from zero to one in the home cell. So that's the same as this guy, right? And then I go from one to zero in the cell on the left. So that would be from one to zero in the cell on the left. And that's very wrong, right? So from one to zero, it's very far hopping. Yes. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. So, okay, so this is the key. This is like 95% of this package. So, when you say zero, like the first index is for the bra in the whole thing, and then the this index and the R is for the cat. So, okay, so that's why this is wrong. So, I, I don't go from one to zero. From one to zero on the left, I don't do that. But I go from one to zero on the one uh, on the above or right. So I go from one to zero here or here. So these are these two. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so uh, okay, so now that we have a way to specify information about the Hamiltonian, and that's kind of the hardest part about using this package or about doing any kind of type binding calculation. You kind of have to make sure that you specify these orbitals correctly. There are a lot of these little teeny tiny annoying signs and p factors you have to worry about and phase factors. And that's kind of the main thing that the code is trying to help you with. And a lot of the rest is kind of on your own. Uh, but there are some features that are also useful. So for example, well, okay, the most obvious one is, so you know, you have all this information and now you know, these objects have actions. So you can do something with them. Um, so like which actions can you do on these objects? Uh, the most obvious one is to find the eigenfunctions. So these are, you know, the block form. So basically, my uh, solution, and I'm looking for some wave function, is going to be some a tilde, uh, some number times the red orbital. Uh, you know, this, the, these orbitals are my basis, and then I can add. Um, is there a question or no? Or, 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 um, and so my wave function is some, some number times the red guy plus some number times the blue guy. And then if I'm looking for solutions in a special form, and not all solutions need to have that form, but 
there is a complete basis with that form as the block form, uh, then the number in front of this orbital has to be a tilde times some phase factor, which is parameterized with one number, which is k. So k is dimensionless. Uh, and then for the blue guy over here, it's the same thing, but with uh, not b. And of course, this goes on forever. So basically, you don't have to store infinite vector. You don't have to store all these numbers. It's enough to store only numbers a tilde and b tilde in this uh, k index. And those two or three, you know, gives me k. So those numbers are enough to specify your wave function. And that's what uh, this package will store. Actually, that's almost what this package will store because this package works with uh, u functions, not psi functions. So these are the guys without tildes um, because that's more natural for the things we are trying to do. Um, but these two conventions are completely equivalent. You can work in one convention or you can work in the other convention. But you have to be consistent. You can't do half of your calculation in one convention and the other half in the other convention, because then that, that leads to trouble. Um, and that's why we don't allow, we don't have any way to switch from one to the other. This package will always give you the second, you know, this convention below uh, for the U functions. And so the difference between these conventions is the phase factor. So the relative phases between AB and A B and B tilde are different. And you know, if we learned anything from the summer school, is that you know relative phases can be important, you know, part of the Berry phase and that stuff. So you kind of have to be careful with this. And this link over here that you can see on the zoom, I think, uh, is uh, the one which um, uh, has information about uh, uh, all these formalisms and phase factors and stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Then how do you get these energies and functions? Uh, in the package. So basically you have this solve function that you call in your model and you give it a K vector and it gives you the, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So it gives you these numbers A and B. Okay, and then, so we have an example. So we have our graphene band structure. Sorry, this is the graphene uh, type binding model with all of these things specified as we uh, discussed uh, before. Um, and so then you plug this into uh, this package and the example plan is over here. Um, and we'll you know, maybe have time to go over the examples later. Uh, so this will be in the folder A and the file is called graphene. Um, and you, know, you go to this and you get this band structure and you get your friend, you know, draw cone. Um, okay, so now the question is, what would happen if instead of the code on the top, you use the code at the bottom? So let me activate this again. So if you did everything the same, but you've placed some random numbers for orbital locations. Uh, so A says that the, the rock cone would appear, you know, band structure would be the same. Uh, and the rock cone would be at exactly the same point as before, you know, two thirds, one third. Um, or B says that the rock cone would appear at a different K point. Okay, so take some time to think about this. I think 21 of you answered. Uh, I'll give you some more time. Okay, so we have a split again. So about two thirds think, no, well, let's see, 36 of you answered. So like 60% think A and then 40% think B. So, okay, so now again, find somebody next to you with a different answer, convince them they're wrong and it's right. And then you can go to them. 
And if there's some uh, clarification, that, uh, let me know if something is unclear in the question or like if I didn't explain some aspect of the code. Again, to find somebody with a different answer, introduce yourself like the person next to you if you haven't. Okay, so if you can answer again if you want. Yes, question, yeah. Uh, so let's say A means the same band structure, same energies, and B means different energies. Let's say maybe you think maybe without you think it's without the direct uh, cone that's like B. So A means you know this picture will look exactly the same, you know, E versus K, and B means it won't. Don't don't worry about the direct cone. Okay, so basically the distribution is the same or very similar. Okay, can somebody uh, offer their uh, thoughts on this, so their opinion on like, what do you guys think about this? You can just take the code and run it, right? <laughs> but anybody? Okay, so it's a mix, you know, it could also be that maybe, you know, the information about how the code actually works wasn't like specific enough. And so maybe it's kind of difficult to tell just based on this what the Hamiltonian actually looks like. Um, does anybody want to still, anybody wants to suggest some, something? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying the symmetry is different. Okay. Did you say that hopping will change? What? Did you say that hopping will change, or do you say that the symmetry, the only symmetry? I didn't hear the last part. Hopping, hopping integral. Because hoping integrals are the same, right? Oh, okay. Yes, symmetry. So, so your argument is basically symmetry is different. Orbitals are different places. I don't have hexagonal symmetry, so I shouldn't have a cone. Uh, I mean, it should be kind of different, maybe. Okay. Somebody else has a different opinion on this? Yeah. So if the hopping are the same, then we already have everything for the back structure calculation. So if they're the same thing, then the orbitals are already incorporated. So there's no way it can, it can be different. Okay, so the other argument is basically hoppings are the same, so everything should be the same from the energies. Somebody else?
Okay, so uh, it's probably so actually if you look at the code, the part which computes Hamiltonian actually never uses this orbitals. And actually, this orbital is used as a very thin, tiny, subtle point somewhere near the end of the code. But uh, like this orbital is not actually used for those things. It doesn't mean it's not important. It's actually very important. But if you only look at the energies, it actually doesn't matter. Um, and uh, in the, uh, at least if you work with the U functions, then Hamiltonian is the same. Um, is there, can somebody think of something physically that would be different between these two models? Or are they physically in every way the same? So, so actually, for example, so there is a difference. So, for example, if you open a gap, you can find the Vanya center, you can find where the orbital is, and you will find the electrons in a different place uh, in the case A and B, uh, in the case above and below. But energies will not change. Okay. Um, let's try this. It's kind of subtle, so uh, and I also want to go to. Well, I said I want to go slower, but I don't have any like additional slides, unfortunately, for the question seven. So let's try question eight, which is kind of similar. Um, so what they've done here is, and well, I mean, I'm willing to go back to seven if somebody wants to give me their opinions on like why they think they would be. But Okay, so, so let's try question eight then. Okay, maybe eight would be more fun. So in question eight, uh, orbitals are at the same place, but I changed this part in gold. Uh, these zero ones are different. Um, and I'm asking the same question. Okay, I have 17 people, so uh, please think about this one and select who you think is the right answer. Are we done? Five minutes? Okay. Okay, so let's see what you guys think. So 75% uh, of you think A. Anybody wants to tell me why did, did you select A? So most of you got this right. So that's because of hematicity, right? Because here, if I specify one zero, one zero, that's the same as swapping the first two and putting a minus on, on the last one. So doing one zero, one zero is the same as zero one minus one zero. So actually the second line here and the second line there are equivalent. And there's absolutely no difference between these two. There's nothing that you can uh, construct uh, that would be different, you know, Hamiltonians and everything, locations, everything is exactly the same. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's the last question I had. I have a few more things I want to show. Um, so there are other actions you can do with the model. Uh, one is that you can take this infinite model and you can kind of chop it up into a finite model. So uh, you can uh, kind of you take scissors and kind of cut from the left and the right. And now you have only three unit cells. And now the model actually is, I mean, the unit cell is basically longer now along the horizontal axis. And now I have six orbitals labeled zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I have way more hoppings between those orbitals. I mean, it's equivalent to you know, three before, but now this is finite. The question is, what do you do with these guys on the edge? Edge is another keyword for this conference because of edge states. Uh, and there are two options. Uh, one option is that you can tell the code, I want the orbital to, if it wants to jump to the left, it actually kind of reappears on the other side. Or the other option is that you don't glue them, that you don't allow the orbital to reappear on the other side. So you have an option to, to, to choose one or the other. And here's the example of the Haldane model. So we start from graphene model and um, so this is 1986 paper from uh, Haldane. So basically you add this six additional hoppings um, 
And all of these additional hoppings basically define the, the whole topology of this churn insulator. And then when you do that to get this churn insulator, this is the density of states. If you make a finite model, but you glue the edges, then you basically don't have the edges because you glue them, so you don't get edge states. There's nothing in the gap. Uh, but if you don't glue the edges, then you get the states of the gap. So those are your edge states. And you know, all this topology stuff is basically a bunch of these ones and zeros. If you think of it kind of as a computer scientist. Um, so now, you know, you can select one of these states and plot it. So this is what the state looks like. You know, it looks in the edge, because the edge state. Um, and then another thing you can do, which is similar, but not the same, is making supercells. So this keeps the periodicity of the sample since of the system. So, you know, if this is your in initial unit cell, you have a function which will make something like this. So for example, this big guy is a supercell and it's two ones. So it's twice along the first lattice vector and then once along the second. So this is my new lattice vector. And the other guy is minus along the first and then twice on the second. So this big box is now the unit cell. And then you can, you know, combine these things together, right? So you can first make a supercell and then you have this big guy and then you can take this big, so you know, this make supercell will return a new object. So this X is the old object and SC is the new object. And now you can take this new object and you can cut it uh, by uh, six. So that means you can repeat it along the, um, the, 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 the second vector six times. So now this big unit cell is going to be repeated vertically six times and I'm not gluing the edges. So then at the end you get like this uh, graphene nano ribbon and you know, this is your band structure. And so that, that's in this example, if you want to run this. Um, okay, then there are other objects that I don't have time to introduce. So for example, this wave, uh, wave function array is a way to, this is a little bit more formal. So this is a way to store wave functions. Yeah. So, so in, uh, in a couple of slides back, yeah. So when, when you make your model finite, you have to choose uh, one of the periodic directions, which you cannot uh, pass it on, let's say, in the three minus one direction. Yeah. So 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 the first good. So the first the first number tells you how many copies, and this tells you along which direction. Thank you. Something else? Okay. Um, so the other object is this wave function array. Uh, this can store wave functions on a grid, parameterized with either a k vector or any other parameter, and then you can compute all these very phase properties. Here, when you put periodic boundary conditions, this is the one of the main places where you use that orb, uh, the orbital. So, okay, so this, this is an example. Uh, so this is from Dave Vanderbilt, for example. So basically, we have a three band structure, uh, band structure with uh, three bands, and you're looking at the bottom band, and you're looking at you know where is this electron in space, and then you pick some parameter. So basically, you kind of uh, in succession, kind of change the onset energies for these three orbitals. You know, the green, green one is the lowest energy, then you make the highest energy and the lowest energy. And then you kind of transport these electrons from uh, one side of the cell to the other. So this is the location of the electron on the vertical axis as a function of this parameter. So this band is totally gapped, but when you change the Hamiltonian, the location of the electron changes by one lattice vector. That's shown here. Um, and then you can also like plot these uh, bands. So this is now a parameter, it's not a case space on the horizontal. And you can compute sure numbers and get these edge states and all sorts of uh, stuff. Um, and then some other examples, you know, this is from the hybrid one function that you have seen on Tuesday. Uh, so here the vertical axis is the location of the hybrid one function. Um, and the color tells you on which edge it is, and so on. So you know there are a bunch of examples that you can look into uh, uh, after this. So so this is the location of that uh, example, which uh, Zoom happens to chop off from my slide. Uh, so this file over here has that. Okay, so then some other resources. So the this website uh, contains a bunch of examples, a lot of the ones that I have uh, talked about, and you know that. They're documented, and you can, you know, I mean, you can, it's probably easiest to just read the code and try to familiarize it right yourself. Um, this website also has this this part of the PDF document, which kind of describes all the conventions, sign factors, and all that stuff. Um, 
then this documents every function and every parameter and every function under, I think, every kind of possibility, you know, did you specify this or that, and this happens, that happens. Um, so you can go to every function and see what it does. Uh, and if you click here on source, it will give you the source code. And you know, source code is relatively readable. You know, if it's not documented, you might be able to understand from the source. And then also, if, there's this book from uh, David Vanderbilt, which also uses this model. I think in Appendix B it describes some 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 examples. The examples you can also find here. Um, I'm not doing the time. No time. I'll out of time. Okay. So I'll then just. Uh, jump to the end. I'll just leave this up uh, and I'll, I don't have any questions, but uh, if you want to run the tutorial, you go to the folder for today's day, uh, you type work on base, you go to that folder and then you run these uh, examples. So each example that you run makes some kind of picture or put something on the screen. Uh, the description of the example is also here. And then uh, there, there's a series of very nice examples from the book. That is also available on the on this website that accompanies the book, um, and uh, the appendix D goes in detail and explains like what's going on with each, with each of these examples. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll thank you for attention and uh, thank you for staying so long on Thursday. <laughs>
I think we can stop here. Let's stop the recording.